men and brethren people of the internet in today's video i'm going to show you how to cut and sew your very own palazzo trouser let's get into it so i'm starting with my fabric on a fold and you guys know i always have a starting line and that starting line is 1.5 inch okay so from there i went down and i marked 8 inches for my hips and 10 inches for my crouch okay i don't know at some point i was marking 9 inches for crouch but i corrected it okay so if you don't know how to get your crouch length check it check the video in my comment section on how to take trouser measurement and calculate crouch length okay so that's my hip line that is my crouch line so after doing this from the top i went ahead to mark my knee line okay and that's 19 inches okay so after doing this i connected my markings with a straight line now it is time to cut so that's my hip line that's my crouch line that is my knee line from top to the bottom is the length of my trouser so from the middle i extended my tape and I marked my hips point plus two inches. Now that two inches is for sewing allowance and every other thing. I did this at the top and at the crouch line. So after doing this, I connected my markings with a straight line. Okay, so from that, my starting line to my crouch line, I drew a straight line. Now after doing this, the next thing I went ahead to do was to uh, mark three inches for my crouch curve. Okay. Because I want to insert my crouch curve here. Now, after doing this, I went ahead to connect it to my crouch line. Okay, then I have my complete crouch. Okay, after doing this, the next thing I went ahead to do was to take the width of my crouch. So, whatever the width of my crouch is, I divided it by two and I marked it. Okay. So that we'll get like a midpoint where we can shape if you want it to be very fitted. So I did this at my crouch point. I did this at my um, knee length and at the hem. Okay. So after doing this, the next thing I went ahead to do was to draw a straight line. You guys, if this audio sounds funny, I'm on vacation. Okay. And I'm just finding the best possible way to give, to push this video out for you guys. Okay. So now at the knee, at the knee point, okay. If you want this trouser to be fitted, this is where you are going to take your actual knee measurement from the middle. You are just going to divide your knee measurement by four. Then you mark whatever it is there. Okay. But if you don't want to be fitted, you want it to be a palazzo at that knee point, you are going to um, step down whatever your crouch width measurement is by two inches you can do it two inches you can do 2.5 i think i did 2.5 here so two two inches 2.5 inches works okay i did 2.5 inches then at the hem whatever your knee the width of your knee measurement is you're going to step it down by 1.5 inch okay and you're going to mark it at the hem now after doing this i just went ahead to connect everything together okay so after connecting everything together, this is what we have here, guys. This is what it's looking like. Now, the next thing I went ahead to do was to mark my actual waist measurement plus 1.5 inch. Okay, your waist measurement plus 1.5 inch because, you know, the this is not like a, an elastic trouser. So you have to shape out your waist. Okay, so after doing this, the next thing I went ahead to do is I marked 6 inches. You can mark 4 if you want. I marked 6 inches from the middle and at that point i came down by one inch and i'm just going to do like a slanted line to kind to get the waist to be a little curvy because you guys this trouser is not going to have a dart okay so we are trying to get you guys know our waistline is not straight so we are trying to get it a little curvy so it fits properly so after doing this the next thing i went ahead to do was to cut it out and open up the sides okay Cut it out, open up the side, and this is what we have going on here for the front part. Now it's time for the back part. And for the back part, my fabric is still on a fold, okay? And the next thing I went ahead to do was to place my front part on the back part. Make sure everything is well situated, everything looks good. So after doing this, the next thing I went ahead to do now was to extend down my crouch line. I extended it. After extending it, I went ahead to mark... 1.5 inch to extend my crouch okay 1.5 inch to extend the crouch after marking 1.5 inch next i went ahead to do was along my inseam i went ahead to add 1.5 inch to accommodate the extra fullness of the butt at the back after doing this i went ahead to connect all my markings together 
okay i went ahead to connect all my markings together i think i was looking for my chalk at this point when i was not in frame you guys i was i'm always looking for things when i'm filming i'm always looking for things either it's scissors or it's chalk or it's ruler okay so i went ahead to connect all my markings together just know you're not alone when you're cutting and you're looking for things i went ahead to connect all my markings together now at that point i extended it upwards okay so after extending it upwards the next thing i went ahead to do was to add that allowance and i added one inch for my dart okay because you guys know we're going to pick that at the back of this trouser to give it shape after doing this i connected it to my hip point okay i connected it to my hip point after connecting it to my hip point the next thing i went ahead to do is at that point i mark 1.5 inch after marking 1.5 each at that point, you guys know we extended that place by one inch for that allowance. Okay, so after doing that, you just want to keep it straight so your measurement is approx is accurate. Okay, so after doing this, the next thing I went ahead to do was to connect those two points together. You guys, when you eliminate a lot of errors when you are cutting, cut sewing make becomes easier. Okay, so after connecting those points together, the next thing I went this is what the front part looks like. The next thing I went ahead to do, guys, was to cut. Okay. The next thing I had to do was to cut. I'm always scared when I'm cutting trousers. Now, I forgot to extend that my crouch point at the back a little bit upward. So, the next thing I had to do is see that ang angled point from the front. I just placed my tape and extended it by half an inch. Okay, you can do one inch. But because I had already started cutting, I did half an inch. So, I extended it by half an inch and I just, uh, you know, married it back into the crouch curve for the back part so after doing this i went ahead to cut so after cutting this is what we have here guys is it not looking beautiful and pretty and handsome and everything i'm just messing with you guys i'm trying to rush through this voiceover before my son wakes up okay so it's time to sew guys it's time to sew now starting with the front part the first thing i went ahead to do was to join the crouch okay and i also did same for the back but for the back i added um sd because of bomb impact so it doesn't start to free at that point so you want to do that for yourself you're also going to join it at the crouch curve for the back so i took it over to my sewing machine and i joined both the front parts together the two parts of the front together and the two parts of the back together after doing this the next thing i went ahead to do was to mark my dart for the back part because remember guys i told you guys the back is going to have a dart okay so i went ahead to pick the dart for the back part okay i picked for the left hand side and for the right hand side so we have two darts okay now the back part is where the zip is going to be and i didn't put any extra allowance for the zip but i'm going to show you guys what i like to do because this also helps to resist tearing okay it helps to strengthen so from the top i mark seven inches depending on how long you want your zip to be then this is like this is just a straight fabric that i put air stay on it's just a strip so the next the next thing i went ahead to do was to grab this fabric and i attached it to the seam allowance of the back part okay so you are going to attach it wrong um right sides to each other um after attaching it to the seam allowance i cut it off the next thing i went ahead to do was to top stitch you guys have said i should stop saying top stitch that is under stitch but see i cannot learn something new in my old age so forgive me so after doing this after top stitching and giving it giving it a good press i did this for the second side and this is what we have going on here for the back so the back part is ready everything looks pretty i've gone ahead to join the front part together and i also did same for the back so the next thing i went ahead to do here guys was to align the midpoint of the front and the back together i aligned it together i secured with my office pin then i went ahead to secure the inseam together you want to make sure everything is accurate everything you know looks put together so after doing this the next thing i went ahead to do was to join it now when i'm sewing this thing i don't sew from end to end i sew from middle to end and from end to middle because you guys know sometimes if you sew from end to end the thing will not be equal so after joining the middle together the next thing i went ahead to do was to mark out my measurement okay so i marked out my hips my waist my my just i just marked out, out all my measurement 
and next thing i went ahead to do was to sew everything together okay so i took it out to my sewing machine and i joined the back and the front part together you did you are going to do this for both sides because i did this for both sides so after doing this the next thing i went ahead to do was to turn over my hem because my selvage was like my hem allowance so i didn't bother adding extra so you guys after turning over my hem the next thing I went ahead to do, remember that the back part is still joined and we need to attach our zip. So I went ahead to open up the back part. You guys remember that line we marked? Uh -huh. That is where we are going to stop. Okay. So I opened up the back part. After opening up the back part, this is what it looks like though. I turned it to the back. But before I turned it to the back, this is what my band looks like. It's just a straight fabric. It is five inches in width folded into two. Okay. So it's five inches in width. By the time you fold it into two, it's 2.5 on both sides. So the next thing I went ahead to do was to attach this band to my waistline. Okay. So I threw it at my sewing machine and I ran straight stitches. You guys, I was rushing here because I was preparing for this vacation. Now, after joining, the next thing I'm going to go ahead to do, or the next thing I went ahead to do was to fold. You're going to fold it just the way you saw me folding. I are going to top stitch, okay? So I folded and I top stitch. This this took a while, okay? If you want to get straight stitches, you want to make sure you're folding and top stitching. You can see my assistant was checking to make sure the stitches were straight. But I told her that, see, I've been long in this business. I know where my stitches are straight. And of course, it came out perfect, okay? So after top stitching, you can see it looks beautiful and pretty. That's why you take your time, okay? Now, the next thing I went ahead to do was to attach my zip. Now, this is the zip I'm working with. But after this vacation, I'm going to go back home and change it to a longer zip. Because your girl, she's got butt, okay? We need more allowance for the butt to easily go into the trouser. Okay, so now, the next thing I went ahead to do was to attach this zip. And after attaching, this is what the beautiful palazzo trouser looks like. Is it not beautiful? Is it not lovely? Is it not pretty? Let me know if you're going to try out this tutorial. And of course, send me pictures on Facebook or on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're watching from YouTube. If you're watching from Facebook, make sure you like, make sure you follow, make sure you share. And I'll see you guys in my next video. If you're watching from YouTube, also make sure you share. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!